So one of the elements that's changing in Pile Home Cinema 2.0 is subwoofers. Let's talk about it. When I did my theater space three and a half years ago, I made specific choices about what speakers and subwoofers I purchased to go with them. And I originally chose two REL S5SHO subs to match with the Focal 1038 BE towers that I'm running in the front of the room. Those RELs have both a low level and a high level connection, which is what RHEL is kind of really known for in terms of musical subwoofers. They're 12 inch driver models sealed with a 550 watt amplifier and they came in at a pretty healthy $2,600 MSRP, although thankfully I was able to deal shop a bit and I did pay a good bit less than that. So for the longest time, the entire time that actually I've been running this theater, I've had those subwoofers up against the front wall sitting right next to the tower because that's kind of how you would integrate them with the towers using that whole high level input connection stuff. And I tried that out, but I always had my doubts about, well, this is a little bit more for music and how is the high level blending working? And along the way, I ended up just disconnecting the high level connections and I ran the subs with regular LFE and used them for what we're using the room for, which was just really home theater, high quality TV shows, video games, not really a two channel focus. So those subs could move and those they could move some air and they could shake the room. But I kind of felt overall that they were really lacking a little bit. I wanted them to hit a little harder, dig a little deeper for the home theater purpose. And also give me some more flexibility that should I really have both of these subs up front, maybe I want one up front, one in the back or sidewall positions and so on. And I really prefer using XLR connections and whatnot. So I, I had the thought uh, amongst the optimizations that are gonna make the second version of our theater space, getting rid of the RELs, selling them off and purchasing something new in the subwoofer domain I think is a big part of elevating the room and helping to bring it to the next level. So I've actually already sold the RELs. Um, I put them up for sale in a couple of places and a local guy came and bought them for the right kind of application. The guy is a two channel guy. He's gonna run them with some really high quality, high cost towers. He's gonna use the high level input and he's gonna use those subs for really what they were designed for. And so I'm left looking for some more meteor focused kind of home theater oriented subwoofers. So what am I going to do? What am I looking for in my shopping? Well, I know for sure I'm buying two subwoofers to start. Two subwoofers is the minimum, especially for my size room, 18 by 16-ish by 11, to get good coverage, good bass response, and even out the bass response and so on. Two at a minimum, possibly as time goes by, I could upgrade to three or, or add a fourth. And I have the room, I have the space in there to be able to do it and position things kind of properly and in a balanced way, but at a minimum, two subs again. I do want to step up to some bigger models. Again, I have the space, I have the floor space, I have the clearances to do so. So I want to come up off of a 12 inch model, at least up into like a 15 inch driver or thereabouts or potentially or potentially larger. Or if, if I were to do a, a dual driver type sub, at least a two by 12, if not a two by something bigger is also. One of the biggest things that I've been really researching and thinking hard about is the idea of sealed versus ported subs. And while a lot of people default themselves to the idea that, oh, well, sealed is for music and ported is for home theater, that's kind of a, a misconception or, or a longstanding myth, uh, you could say, in current uh, subwoofer designs. It's not really so cut and dry anymore. There, there are real logistical and functional differences between a sealed sub and a ported sub in terms of how they perform and in what frequency domains they perform and how they roll off and how they produce their bass and that sort of thing. It's definitely a point of discussion to make. Um, and I have to say on the surface that I probably am, despite again being a home theater, leaning more towards the idea of a sealed subwoofer than a ported subwoofer, but we'll see. I haven't ordered the new subs yet. I'm cross shopping a bunch of brands, comparing Rhythmic, Paradigm, Sue, Power Sound Audio, looking at REL again, but only specifically the HT1508 model, as well as Episode, and Arendelle. So quite a, quite a lot of shopping and across a variety of spectrum of fit and finish and features and capabilities and so on. But I can fit some bigger subs in there. I'm looking for probably not something much bigger or exceeding about a 24 inch cube. And again, balancing the idea between two and four and, and that sort of thing. But I know where my budget's gonna sit. I'm certainly spending probably about four grand between the two subs, possibly a little bit more. So we'll see, uh, we'll see what we end up with. 
Subwoofers will be a big part of the redo, and again, focusing more towards home theater. No more speaker level, high level stuff. My, my goal is to find subs with XLR connections. That way it's, it's easier to run longer cable with, with uh, potentially not even worrying about interference and that sort of thing. Be able to get to the different areas of the room, get something up front, get something in the back. I would say as well that for my listening, we're usually in that like minus five to maybe minus 12 dB range. We're not going down to, you know, down to zero or, or past the zero in our listening. And we do watch a lot of movies and stuff with the family. And I don't think anybody's looking for some face melting base experience. But so looking at something re really at another level, like devastators and so on, I don't think really fits what we're looking for. And it doesn't necessarily fit our room either. It's a sizable room, but it's not it's not huge and I'm not hiding a lot of stuff away so if I were to do something like a devastator it would be this monumental box kind of looming over everything in the room and that's not what I'm looking for I want the new redesign the to be at a at a, at a calmer and more integrated clean level um, say clean level of integration so we'll see what I choose specifically and certainly once I make the decision I get them ordered and they arrive I'll be doing unboxing and, and installation videos and all of that I would have to say that as a leading candidate, I am looking at the Arendal, um, Arendal, I need to actually verify how to say that, but looking hard at the 1723 1S, 1V, 2S, and 2V, and probably centering on, on a likely purchase of a dual set of 2Ss. I think that'll give us all the performance we need in a, in a cabinet size that, that fits a little bit better, a little, little more squat than the 2V is, especially if one of those goes in the front of the room, the 2V would be intruding upon the bottom of the screen, potentially depending on where it's sitting left to right. And so price-wise and, and potentially adding more, I think the 2S is probably the sweet spot. Two of those in my space, I think I'll have all of, this, all of the low-level base SPL that I need and the two coupling together in a pretty, pretty good space for benefiting from the coupling of the subs. We'll bring those levels up and I think I'll be able to get as low as I need with some nice, really tight, accurate space. So that's my leading candidate, but I haven't pushed the buy button yet. Expecting to do that here pretty quickly after recording this video. So if you have thoughts on subwoofers, what do you like? Sealed versus ported, models, sizes, two versus four. Let me know what you think. What are you using in your home theater space? But this is one of the things I'm really excited for because I think the RELs did okay, but they were just the wrong kind of subwoofer for the room. And that's really the kind of stuff that I'm looking to fix in the 2.0 revision here, is really get things focused for a specific use case and get everything up to a up, up on par level of capability and performance and mindset and focus and have it all work together so that the sum of all of the parts that are really balanced against each other catapults this room to a whole new level of capability and performance. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, particularly subscribe. Help us grow the channel. The numbers are, are, are moving great, but it's really subscribers that, that uh, can help the most. So, And also, too, take a look down in the description below if you'd like to help support the channel. There's some Amazon associate links and some other things. Take a look. I'd love it. Thank you, thank you, if you feel so inclined to do so. Thanks for watching. and Look for more videos about what Pile Home Cinema 2.0 is going to entail.